students, recently I started a series of videos centered on urban development models. My first video discussed the Burgess concentric zone model and explained how Ernest Burgess suggested that cities like Chicago form from the center outward, forming circular rings called zones that attempted to explain how people use urban space based on their economic needs and wants. In this video, we will look at another model that attempts to do the same thing, the Hoyt sector model. Homer Hoyt was a geographer who looked at the Ernest Burgess model and thought that there was more work to be done or something was missing. He believed that the ring type zones shown in the Burgess model was too simplistic and failed to adequately capture the why of where related to how people truly used urban space. So he postulated that rather than concentric zones or rings, you could better explain how people situate themselves within a city by using sectors that stem from the CBD. His model was proposed in 1939, a little more than a few years after the Burgess model. Here's how it worked. The city center, or the CBD, is where there is virtually no residence, and industrial jobs existed within or nearby. In older cities, the central business district was usually the oldest part of those cities. It is also important to note that today, when you mention the CBD of a city, you are referring mostly to the area with the tallest buildings, the downtown area, or even the financial sector or financial district of a city because of the types of high-end services that exist in today's CBDs. It was very similar, yet different in the 1930s. The sector model suggests that people settled in sector regions around the CBD, not concentric zones. So the industrial job sector emerged where transportation was already established, which actually makes sense. People who lived in and around this sector needed access to affordable transportation that would enable them to get to and from their jobs. The area was loud and dirty, as it would have been in the concentric zone model. And again, just like with the Burgess model, the residents of this area lived in apartments. The area of low class housing would be the same as its corresponding zone in the Burgess model. These would be older, poorer houses in close proximity to their industrial job. Because of the space used in the nature of the expansion of the cities, middle class dwellings emerged between these regions in sectors of their own, rather than as circles around these areas. The middle class residents of these sectors lived in suburbs, and finally, the high class residential sector stemmed outward from the CBD, but extended everywhere from right next to the CBD, all the way onto the outskirts of the city. This model, like the Burgess model, has many limitations. Like with any model, it is not expected to deal in absolutes there will be and are exceptions to the sector model. It isn't exact science. While it does take into consideration the rail car as a form of inexpensive and accessible transportation, it does not take into consideration cars, which is what we primarily use today. The model doesn't take into account topography such as elevations and bodies of water. It also assumes that all people will live where they do based entirely upon economic advantage, which is not always the case. Last but not least, the model is pre-World War II. Living preferences have changed several times since the invention of this model. It doesn't really do a great job at explaining many of the most current urban development trends. That does it for the Hoyt sector model. I hope you're feeling smart and informed right now. Stay tuned for my next urban model explanation, the multiple nuclei model. See you next time on Professor Dustin. Thanks for watching.